right, all right. How are you guys doing today? Uh, I'm going to talk about this topic, but somebody here, uh, Aniket, you keep asking me this question. Let me see if I can... Uh, I don't think I have anything for you on this one. Aniket, it's a good question. How much impact does an animated presentation make to a customer for a product which he isn't aware of? Uh, it really depends on the type of presentation. I like to use, I think your second question is, uh, what software would you recommend? Um, yeah, I think you had it here. What's recommendation? I don't like animation software. I got to be honest, that's just personal feeling. That's just me, by the way. Uh, other people could love it. I don't like it. What I like using is Loom. I don't know if, have you, are you familiar with Loom? You probably are. Because uh, I think I've mentioned in the past. So Loom, Loom.com is a, is a software that allows you to actually record the screen, Anakin, and you know, actually walk people through a demo. I actually like that better. So for example, if you have some type of SaaS product, you can actually click on Loom, it'll start recording the screen, and it'll put your face on the bottom wherever you want it to be. And then you can walk the customer through that. And through that, I would tell a story, like Mr. Customer, for example, let's say you're trying to pull up this report. Here's how it would work. And you would actually show it with the actual software. So that's the best I can do, man. All right, yes, sir, from Sudan, man. Thank you for joining me, appreciate you. Hassani from Tanzania, not Tanzania, Tanzania. Got it. So anyway, love it for being here. Uh, let me show us we got. Uh, Miner's got some nice input here. The more value you provide in your videos to a uh, small group, the more relevance you'll have for your clients. Good advice, man. Very, very good advice, man. So anyway, take that one too, Anika. That's a really good advice. All right, so I want to talk real quickly about this right here. I want to talk about how to improve your sales memory. So lately, by the way, it's going to be a short version. Uh, I'm going to be on live tonight, by the way. Uh, so tonight being East Coast time, New York time. So 9 p.m. I will go live. 9 p.m. New York time, I go live. Uh, somebody canceled the meeting, so I figured, yeah, let me just jump online here real quick and share something with you, which I think is pretty cool. I've been fascinated with memory lately, just like how people remember things, because I think your memory will determine how successful you want to be. And so I was um, reading some different studies, and I want to share these things with you because I think it's pretty cool. Hey, Nicole from uh, North Carolina. And so let me go ahead and share this with you, Rook. Like, there's five ways to actually remember things better, because if we can remember things, keep in mind that we're going to be better at our presentations, we're going to be better at presenting, but we're also going to be better at, at you know, actually answering questions. So here are the five things. Um, well, by the way, one of the myths that uh, some of these studies are breaking is the, the repetition. You know how if you're told to read something and read it over again, you drive it into your brain? Well, that's actually wrong. So repetition doesn't help. But here's what they found. That if you, for example, here, let's say this is you, right? And let's say you studied, right? You studied once and then you studied twice, right? This is your second time. And another person studied once only. And then immediately they took a test, right? You took a test. What they found is that this group actually did much better, which kind of makes sense, right? They reviewed the material twice, then they took the exam, they read the material once, then they took the exam. So one would assume, and it makes sense, that this person right here would probably get better grades or better scores. But then they did something interesting. What they then did, instead of giving the test right away, what they did is they spaced it out, let's say two weeks later. Two weeks later, right? So two weeks later go by, two weeks go. Now, which one do you think scored higher? It's a good question to ask you guys. Which one do you think scored higher? Do you think number one scored higher or do you think number two scored higher? Which one do you think scored higher? Come on, hit me with a one or hit me with a two. By the way, King Harry asked me, is my wife okay with the 9 p.m. stream? I think she is, I think she is, but thank you, man. <laughs> Appreciate you. What do you think, one or two? After two weeks, remember this person studied once, reviewed the material twice, this person done just once, and then two weeks later they took the exam, who do you think did the best? If you answered one, you're wrong. If you answered two, you're wrong. <laughs> they found no difference. This was, this was interesting. See, the, the people were able to retain the information, it's like when you cram for an exam, they were able to cram for a while and retain the information. But over time, it was almost the same as if you only read it once because they forgot the information. So cramming doesn't work. So when they, in, in these different studies, we're trying to figure out how do people learn. And I'm going to give you five tips that I extracted from them to help you retain more. Because the key is not 
remembering right, you know, as soon as you have to take a test and just remembering right there and then, sometimes you want to retain the information to be able to recall the information. So here are five tips, five tips to be able to retain more information over a long period of time. The first one is when you read material, read material, quiz yourself. That was the first thing. Just quiz yourself, right? And by quiz yourself means, uh, what I do a lot is, people always ask me, how do I remember certain things? Besides using mental models, I write stuff on index cards. And then sometimes you can actually just say, what is, and then have the answer on the back. And so that's the first thing you can do is to quiz yourself. And then the second thing you should do, and I want to make sure that when you quiz yourself, then space it out. What does that mean? Give it a week and then go back and review the cards again. And that, what happens is, now you're forcing your brain to retrieve the information, and that effort in retrieving the information is really hard coding into your brain that piece of data. So being able to retrieve it two weeks later really starts jamming it in your brain after a while, okay? Now the third thing, that I thought this was really interesting, the third thing is, when you're practicing something, when you're trying to learn something, what they said is, don't just do the same thing over and over again. So for example, when you're practicing trying to remember something, mix it up. And they did this study. There was one study where they had uh, baseball players playing baseball, right? And what they did was basically, they said, look, and I'll just write it here. Uh, you're going to get three types of pitches. Each are going to be 15 pitches. So you're going to have a curse ball, fastball, and a changeup, right? Curveball, fastball, changeup. So the first 15, Curveballs. Second 15, fastballs. Third 15, you know, change up, right? Then they looked at their scores, right? Then they did something interesting. For the next group, they did the same thing. You get 45 pitches, but this time it was just 45, but you didn't know whether it was a curveball, change ball, uh, or a fastball. You didn't know, right? They just threw 45 at you, but you didn't know which was which. And they then looked at the scores. You can imagine which one did better. Which one do you think did better? A or B? What do you think did better? Who did better? Who do you think did better? A or B? A or B? A or B? A or B? Come on, I know you guys are good at this. A or B? A? Score? B. If you said A had a better score, you are absolutely wrong. What they found is that this right here, they did better because, because they didn't know what was coming. Basically what happened is they were forced to actually learn harder. It was more effortful. In other words, they had to actually pull effort into, again, the more effort you put into memorizing something, imagine not knowing what's coming. Now your brain's trying to calculate what's coming. If you kind of know what's coming already, then your brain relaxes more. So you, <laughs> it's okay, Herb, to be wrong. It's okay, man. So this one, so what does this mean for us? is that when you're practicing something, let's say you had to practice how to, instead of curveball, fastball, changeup, you had to learn how to do, you know, tough questions for cold calls, right? Uh, tough questions for presentations, right? Tough questions for making discovery calls. And then maybe you can change up your training with different cards. In other words, don't just do 15 of one, 15 of another, 15 of another. Just change them all up and really test yourself. So that was the other one. Uh, the phrase they used for this is, they said basically you should, let me just erase that. You should actually, this is called um, uh, interweaving. So you interweave different types of learning, okay? You interweave different types of learning. The other one to help you with memory, and this one I do a lot, is to explain it to yourself. Your, to explain it to yourself in your words. Sorry about that, in your words, right? In other words, when you learn a new concept, explain it to yourself how you understand it. So you read the concept, you go, okay, I kind of get that. But then you go, how would I, okay, so that would mean I would say it like this. And then you would explain it to yourself in a different way. And by explaining it to yourself that way, you actually retain that more. Last but not least, the true test, a true test of retention, because that's all we're talking about here is retention, memory retention. The last one is teach it to teach it or explain it to somebody else. Explain it. Because now when you're explaining it, you're, you're forcing your brain to really think through the concept to be able to explain it to somebody else. 
And so, you know, consider these five. By the way, this is a quick lunch and learn I'm just doing with you guys. I got to get off in about 15 minutes. But I wanted to share this with you because I thought, when I, as I'm, you know, really studying memory, as a couple of you pointed out already, I've been on this memory thing, because it's really about retention and how we remember things and what we remember. So if you need to learn something, remember cramming for something, if you got to take the, take the test the next day, yeah, it'll work for the next day. But a month from now, you're not going to remember the information. So if you're learning a new sales program, or if you're learning some new content or some new products, let's say you have a new product you have to sell, study the product, then write out, for example, quiz yourself. Maybe on, on uh, index cards, write yourself some questions customers would ask you, right? And then space it out. Do it every two days, every three days to force your brain to recall. Remember, every time you force your brain to recall, boom, it's there. The third one is, again, change it up. Maybe you have three different products, so you, you just interweave all three products in terms of questions you ask yourself with the flashcards. Explain it to yourself the way you understand it. Like I said, that's big for me, because sometimes people say things and I go, I, I don't get it. And then when I explain it to myself my way, I go, this is how I understand it. And then I use analogies a lot. Okay, so if I'm, so I would look at that as like, if you're going down the road and you know, whatever it may be, I come up with analogies like that. And then the last one is when you try to explain it to somebody just as a test, you force it, it into your brain. So anyway, let me see what you guys got for comments, man. That's all I had to present for you guys in this short version of what I got going on. Uh, a lot of you guessed A on that one, interesting. Herb hates being wrong. Uh, you like the third point, the interleaving. Isn't that a good one, right? The interleaving indicator is a really interesting one. Let me see if I can make this bigger here. Yeah, that one I thought was interesting because I never looked at it that way. I never looked at it that way. Uh, King Herring, uh, good wisdom, but curious about your sources. I don't have it with me, uh, but I will publish those King Herring, okay? And then I'll highlight the sources. You're such a cynic and such a skeptic. I love it, man. All right, uh, Anakin, fourth, I do. Perfect. Uh, the Smart Chola. Uh, short but helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, how do I overcome the customer objection without being pushy? Uh, not on topic, but I understand your concern. Hey, so, Abdehei uh, hey, Fami, I hope I got that right. So join me tonight uh, at nine o'clock uh, New York time, because I'm gonna go into um, uh, talking about resistance and this fits in perfectly. Again, I wanna keep this one short, so it's not that I'm ignoring your questions. So if you can join me at 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, so I, by the way, I've set a schedule, for those of you who don't know yet, uh, Sunday night, Tuesday night. So Sunday, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursdays, I will go live at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or a lot of people just like to say New York time. Same thing, New York time, right? And this is my Sales After Dark program, Sales After Dark, okay? And so you guys have been asking me to be more consistent in my, my, my live stream, so I, I hear you, man. So I hope you're okay with that. Uh, Minor Portillo, very awesome, man. Thank you for joining me, and I'm glad you're tracking me on the memory thing. Uh, I think I'm gonna write a book on that eventually, Minor. I think so. I think so, man. Uh, Jody's Adventure, man. Thanks for the advice. Thank you for being here. Uh, that's called Sex Ideas. I have no idea, so let's keep it G-rated. I'm moving on. I really enjoy your posts and your YouTube videos. Nicole, you're awesome, man. Thank you for joining me. And like I said, the only, by the way, the only, um, the only favor I ask besides liking this video is share it with at least one person. That's all I ask you to do. Share one of these videos with at least one person. And so, oh, oh mine was explaining itself. He meant interweaving. Yeah, I guess you could look at it that way. Uh, so block them. There's a great video on that by Victor. So that's part of the resistance. In fact, look at that one, uh, Abdehe. Uh, what uh, Yasser is mentioning now, I can tell Yasser follows me. There's uh, look for the blocking objections video. That's one way of doing it. And so we'll, we'll try to touch on it away. Uh, let me see, uh, who's, what's this one first? Sorry, I don't want to skip any here. Abdehe said, okay, thank you, Victor, for your reply. Okay, like I said, I'm not ignoring you. I want to answer you, so I'm going to shorten this one up. Awesome, thanks for sharing. Lily Juarez, herbs back, herb wash. Thanks for, uh, for the schedule. Now, where can I get one of those awesome SVA t-shirts? You know, I only made like one shirt. I was just testing it out, so I have to make some because a few people have asked for those Sales Velocity Academy shirts, so. And by the way, if you haven't signed up for the Sales Velocity Academy, you should. And by the way, right here, I always forget, hit that little, if you're on YouTube and you subscribe to my channel, make sure you hit that little bell because that gives session going on for lockdown period at least. Okay, cool. I might do that, I might do that. I'll do it just because I enjoyed it. 
Uh, just joined in from Kenya. Great job, Victor. You can watch it on the re replay. Adewa Opar. And on that note, I'm going to keep this one short. Like I said, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the memory thing is big, and I think, uh, you know, review this, um, this information because I think these, these five points I gave you right here, I think they're powerful when you really think about, you know, how do we improve our memory? Because the better we're able to retain information and recall it, the more effective we be, will be when we're selling. Uh, let me see. Miner says, I love it. Uh, it's a clutch system, man. Um, and then, thank you, King Herring. Thank you, brother. Uh, Ringo Romero. Dude, what an awesome day. That's a great handle, man. Ringo Romero. All right. Now, officially, on that note, I'm letting you guys go. Again, join me tonight at 9 p.m. Be not Malik. Thank you for being a great fan. Appreciate you guys. Talk to you tonight.